Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Daebak Podcast, where we do a deep dive into the classic Korean dramas that have won over generations of fans across decades and around the world. Today we're discussing Boys Over Flowers, the 2009 drama that was one of the biggest K-drama hits ever and that catapulted Yi Min Ho and the rest of the cast into how you stardom. This one's going to be epic, folks. Strap in and get ready because we are going all in. I'm one of your hosts, Alisa, also known as the Bollywood Newbie on Twitter, and I'm joined by Melanie of Pardesi Reviews on YouTube. Hello. Vicky of That Vicky Girl, also on YouTube. Hi. And Catherine of TotallyFilmy.com. Hey. Before we begin our episode, we want to take a moment to acknowledge those who lost their lives in a mass shooting in Atlanta, Georgia last week. This terrible crime is part of a wave of hate and violence aimed at the Asian community in the U.S. and other parts of the world. As people who love Asian films and dramas, this hits us hard as we see friends who are grieving and angry and sharing painful personal stories of times they've been victims of hate. We want all of you to know that we stand with the Asian community and we will do everything we can to push back against hate and violence. Now I'd like to take a moment to say the names of the people who lost their lives last week. Soon Chung Park, Hyun Chung Grant, Sun Cha Kim, Young E Yu, Delena Ashley Yun, Paul Andre Michaels, Xiao Jie Tan, and Dao Yo Feng. Condolences to their families and those who love them. And thank you to the Asian American Journalists Association for providing the correct pronunciations of their names. Please consider supporting their work against the hypersexualization of Asian women and racist violence. Before we begin our episode, I just want to give folks a couple of content warnings. Uh, one is that this episode will contain massive spoilers for Boys Over Flowers and all of the related dramas that were inspired by the manga Hana Yori Dango. If you haven't seen it yet, please stop, go watch it, and then come back to the episode. I also have to give a content warning for this episode because we will be discussing bullying and sexual violence both in the news and also as part of the plot of Boys Over Flowers. And admittedly, this is kind of a heavy way to start things off, but I do want to be respectful given some of the themes we'll be discussing in this episode. So um, now I'd like to shift gears to something nicer and uh, actually quite lovely and say thank you to everyone who listened to our last episode on my lovely Samsung. It has been incredibly exciting to see all of the cities and countries where we have listeners. Uh, it turns out only about 23% of our listeners are in the US and other countries where we have listeners include Canada, the UK, Philippines, India, Australia, Germany, Russia, Malaysia, Singapore, and Qatar. And I'm not even covering all of the countries where we have listeners. So that's actually incredibly cool. However, no listeners from South Korea, which is absolutely fascinating to me because all of us are active on YouTube and podcasting for Indian content and the overwhelming majority of our audience for that con for those podcasts and YouTube uh, is from India. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, 70% of my audience for my videos about um, Indian films are from India. So it's fascinating to me. Yeah. yeah and and Go ahead. Sorry, you you had asked this question on on Twitter, and I couldn't get in fast enough to say that part of part of that issue is the preponderance of English in India versus in South Korea, which is not not going to be at the same level. So we're not going to get that kind of reach in that audience. That's true. I also do wonder, though, because there is a large community of Korean Americans who watch K dramas, and they are also not part of our audience. 
So, uh, and they're very active online because I see their communities. So I actually think language is definitely an issue. I don't think it's the only thing. And I just find it interesting. I don't have an answer to it. And I don't even necessarily go, well, you should be listening to us, you know, <laughs> yes, <laughs> nobody, <you> should be. <laughs> I mean, anybody listens to us, right? So like, um, it's all good. I, I, but I just think it's a, just quite an interesting contrast in terms of, in, you know, it is a contrast, it. but I mean, we're yeah. also discussing classic dramas and it may right. be a case of been there, done that. And if we were talking about Vincenzo or some of the latest dramas, maybe it would be different. I don't know. That's well, true a lot, too. A lot of the people who have gotten on board following Crash Landing on You um, are spending more of their time, I think, on, on new dramas. And if they dip back, they don't dip back very far yet because you know if they've only been watching this past year there's a lot a lot to get to that's true so have i though and anyway no i hear what you're saying i, I they actually i suspect this is just something that it's like i'm knowing the kind of person i am it's going to be in the back of my brain and i'm going to continue like digging and trying to figure out tease out exactly what's going on with that um but it is quite interesting um, the other thing I wanted to mention is we got some lovely feedback from folks. So I want to give a shout out to some of our listeners who took the time to write to us. Uh, one is Elle on Twitter, and she says, I listened on Spotify. Interesting and fun. Sorry you couldn't hear me when I commented back. I absolutely love that. I think I that's that. awesome. <laughs> Um, we may be giving you an opportunity to talk back to us directly if we can pull ourselves together to do the clubhouse that we're planning. So we'll keep you posted on that. Um, more from Elle, she says, glad I watched Walk of Love before Samsoon or I would have hated Chung Ryo Wan's character. Although I felt sorry for her in Samsoon, I mostly hated how selfish and manipulative she was. And I'm waiting for Vicky to give an amen in the corner. Because amen. Amen, the same amen. Way. <laughs> she was like, uh, he Um, Yeah. Well, if you get to, um, because I did the crazy thing and went and watched um, My Name is Busaba, which is the Thai remake from the, very recently. If you want to see a manipulative second lead female, oh, go no. and watch that. No. <laughs> she will, she will you make skip you. It. She will yeah. make you appreciate. Um, wow. In my oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> uh, I actually thought Heejin was was very complex, complex character, which which was good. Even so, even when she was bad, you could understand why she was being bad. Um, but anyway, moving along, we have RK on Twitter, who said, this was terrific. My lovely Samsoon is one of my all-time favorites, and it was so great to have others share my love for this drama and what makes it a timeless masterpiece. And RK and I talk a lot on Twitter about dramas, and particularly we spend a lot of time on Samsoon, so we're both like Samsoon super fans, so I really appreciated hearing from her. And finally, Ksenia, who is our Russian um, fan, uh, she says, I think it's really wonderful you're doing this series. There isn't much centralized and publicized discourse on dramas in the English speaking part of fandom, just old and new clicks on Twitter and Tumblr. And this podcast has everything. It's fun. It offers a variety of opinions and a broader look at the tropes and criticisms and context. And I just love that. That's the nicest thing anybody ever said. <laughs> Catherine is doing a, a finger hearts. I mean, you can't. <laughs> Gosh. I mean, when I came up with the idea for this podcast, what Ksenia said was exactly what I was aiming for. So it's extra cool that somebody understood the perspective we're trying to bring. Um, because we like to have fun. We like to ogle the cute boys. And, um, you know, at least I do. <laughs> <laughs> I second. Uh, and we have a good time, but it is also popular culture is never just about popular culture. It's always about deeper issues in terms of community, gender roles, uh, race, all kinds of things that uh, come out through the popular culture that are really uh, important to talk about. So I'm glad we're hitting all of that in the podcast. So very cool. Thank you, our listeners. It was very exciting to hear from you guys. And now I'd like to segue and do a quick intro into the drama we will be discussing today, which is Boys Over Flowers. 
Boys Over Flowers is the 2009 adaptation of Hana Yori Dango, the wildly popular Japanese manga that began running in 1992 and was published for 11 years and 37 volumes. Yikes. Crazy. <laughs> 11 years. Crazy. Um, I read a little bit of it too, which we'll get into. Uh, Hana Yori Dango has given birth to at least 14 official adaptations, including a radio drama, an anime film, a live action Japanese film, and drama adaptations in Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and China. In addition, there are several unofficial adaptations, including ones made in Indonesia, India, the Philippines, and believe it or not, in the US, which was quite amazing to me. So this franchise has been popular for nearly 30 years. And it's not over yet because a Thai version called F4 Thailand will be dropping in June of this year. And I think we're all planning on watching it. I'm definitely planning on watching it. <laughs> um, so she is hardcore fans. <laughs> I'm hardcore. I'm hardcore. I like to watch all the versions and compare them. Uh, so turning back to Korea, to say that Boys Over Flowers was a massive hit doesn't really do it justice because not only was the show a hit in Korea with ratings hovering around 30%, it was one of the most important shows of the Hallyu wave enjoying massive popularity in China, Japan, and the rest of Asia. Boys Over Flowers tells the story of Chan Di, a poor but hardworking and feisty teenager who through a series of unlikely events ends up as a scholarship student at Xinhua Academy, an exclusive school for the ultra rich elite. The school is ruled by the F4 or the Flower Four, a group of incredibly wealthy and handsome young men whose leader, Junpyo, is a bully who relishes torturing the plebes. But Jandi refuses to bow to Junpyo's will, and as a result, she wins his love. But many threats lurk to their happiness, including Junpyo's best friend, Jihu, who also loves Jandi, and Junpyo's mother, who is determined to destroy their relationship. The series stars Yi Min Ho as Jun Pyo, and this was the part that made him a star. Ku Hye Sun as Chan Di, Kim Hyun Jung as Ji Hu, who essentially created second lead syndrome. And we'll you look in the dictionary, that's his picture right there. Oh, like, totally. Second, <laughs> second lead syndrome, it all comes from here. Is that literally true in Wikipedia? They have his picture. Oh, oh that would be funny. It should be. I'm going to create an entry and put his picture. That's, in. Anyway, that's just a Melanieism. <laughs> but it's true. Um, and then finally, Kim Bum, who most recently you saw in Tale of the Nine Tale as one of the F4 Yi Jung. Yep. So this is very fraught. One of the themes of this podcast is what makes a classic a classic. So what do you all think made this show a classic? Now, we had a long and spirited discussion about this before recording about whether this show is a classic, whether it qualifies. So I'm actually going to turn this over to Catherine because she was the person who fought us the hardest on the idea that this show is a classic. So No, and I had to give in on that. <clears throat> and I think one of the things we'll talk a bit about today is, is problematic classics. I think you've got that as a note for us. Um, and I think the th I res really resisted that, despite all the evidence, um, because I don't like this drama. No, quite honestly, I hate this drama with a white hot hate. <laughs> and, and I apologize to people for whom this is their favorite drama, um, you know, because I get it. it. Sometimes something speaks to you in some way and it is what it is. Um, so I apologize. You can still love this drama. Please love your drama. Um, but yeah, I, I, as I said, so. But uh, what I, is it about it that made you? So first of all, I, and then this is just Alisa interjecting and other people may disagree with me. Everyone is gonna have their opinion here. And if you're a diehard fan, you'll probably hate this episode. And if you're a diehard anti fan, you probably will hate this episode as well. Uh, we have a wide variety of opinions uh, represented among our hosts. It's a very but polarizing I, drama. Yeah. I mean, so, I just said, if we're, if we're going to do this series and we talked about which shows should be included, I just said, there's no way that we could do this series without doing an episode on Boys Over Flowers. It is the one when you begin that 
you you're told is one of you know the ones that you have to see like it Mm -hmm. it's uh you know for those uh, since all of us are you know into indian films it's like if you haven't watched ddlj in hindi cinema it's the one from which all so many references and allusions are made just to be culturally in the know of what people are talking about and referring back to, you sort of at least have to watch part of this drama to get it. And there's so many, uh, so many variations on this uh, setup, you know, of, of this show and, and shows that are reacting against what Boys Over Flower is, shows that are trying to imitate what Boys Over Flower is. So you have to know what is the OG, what, where is the original one, where it all comes from. And I watched this um, a year ago, very early in my K-drama watching, and it was interesting. I literally finished re-watching this series a half, half an hour before we started recording. I finished the last one. And it was funny because my husband was walking through um, and he was oblivious when I watched it the first time. But now he's he's seen me watch other K-dramas and he said, this one is so different. And he's like, she's bleeding again. This is sadistic. This is the most you know sadistic show I have ever seen in my life. Like you know, and it was just funny seeing his reaction because he's right. Compared to a lot of the other shows that I like to watch now, this is very different. But I kept saying to myself, why was this show such crack to me the first time that I watched it? There's so much that happens, right? <laughs> so many twists and turns. And up until the very end is who is she going to pick, right? Like, I mean, we know, but even so you're like holding up out hope, like, gee, who is right there? He's right there. <laughs> I know all, I, all of us, gee, who should know? Hey, Vicky isn't. I was such a gee, who shipper. It wasn't even funny. Like the funny thing to me about this show is like our other drama, because we've done Coffee Prince, we've done Lo- Lovely Samsoon, and we were like, it is amazing acting. Oh my God, it's so well written. The directing is so well done. It's nuanced explorations of things like sexual identity and the roles of women in society. And Boys Over Flowers has none of that, right? Yeah, the complete it is, opposite. <laughs> it is regressive as hell, right? Um, it is... Uh, but it's like crack it's like crack. you you cannot look away like you have to watch you're compelled to every cliffhanger you're like oh my god what is gonna happen next it's so ridiculous that you just end up like like you're not liking it but you're just so into it for no reason like i personally could not even tell you to this day why i like this show and I say that in a bit, it's not that I like it. I actually have a love and hate relationship with this particular show. However, there's just something about it that I don't know why, but I can't completely bash it because a small part of me also kind of enjoyed it way more than I wanted to. So yeah, it's interesting. It's a very interesting dilemma I have with the show. <laughs> I can't we remember. We also have a, I'm Go sorry. Ahead. I was- I was just going to say, I can't remember if it was Alisa or Catherine that sent us a link to an academic paper about Boys Over Flowers and all of its variations. And one of the arguments of this paper was how many characters are archetypes of fairy tales, mm. okay? And I, and I do think that there is just something at like a molecular DNA level yeah. about this show that just shoots right into your veins and you just can't (laughs) like you know literally like it's like crack like you're just like okay uh it 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 affects you at such a basic level of your psyche because it hits all of these fairy tale tropes you know you have the evil mother you have uh you know cinderella you have all of these things arrogant boy (laughs) right you have the the arrogant prince or whatever you know it's beauty and the beast whatever like there's Mm -hmm. so many different sort of um archetypes of fairy tales that are going on in this drama and i just think it resonates with you at just this such a basic level that uh, um even if you know like my husband was just like oh my he hates john d because she's screeching so much especially in the first episode she's constantly screaming and screeching and he's (laughs) <laughs> he just couldn't stand it. so and you know i mean she mellows out over time she does grow up but oh my god she is 
Well, we yeah. should it's we spicy. can get into that later when we talk about the other versions of this, okay. uh, because some of us have seen the 2001 version Media Garden, and we've also watched the 2005 version, which is Hana Yori Dango, which is Japanese. And John D is a very different character than Makino and Shansai, and so we can get into that later yeah. but i and i think korea ruined <laughs> ruined the character which is really upsetting but going back to like why is this so appealing on a let's just like break it down like there's a lot going on but on a very superficial level you have four hot guys who have what was it amrita said on twitter those are the most aggressively stylish haircuts i've ever seen <laughs> right <laughs> And, I love it. I love and it. It was so funny. And then they're like dressed to kill, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So oh yes, fashionista. We love it. We love it. And I mean, people. And I think Catherine was asking me, "Do you ironically or unironically love the fashion?" I'm like, I unironically love the fashion. I yeah. love it, even when it's ridiculous and over the top, because it works. It's myth building. It's yeah. creating a mythic element around these young men and i love their first entrance their first oh, entrance yeah. is yeah iconic. you can, see you can't beat it it's just something like what melanie said it's like <laughs> well they come in right all of them were together music is blaring the whole yeah. school is screaming like it's a concert yeah and they stroll in in slow motion it's a four, it's yeah. a four, it's it's a four. Four. With the light glowing through the doorway. Yeah, yeah, there's light flooding the doorway. There, and you know, on the one hand, it's ridiculous, and you know it's ridiculous, and you're like, this is, and then the other, but the other part of you is like swooning over it. It's really interesting, right? That whole. I know my husband yes. was joking. He's like, "So should I get my hair?" I mean, he didn't know. So like, "Gee, who?" He's like, "I think I need a new hairstyle." <laughs> <laughs> well, and the thing is, like, the female gaze is served in a ridiculously oh, yes. over-the-top way. These guys oh, yeah. are served up on a freaking platter for you every mm-hmm. other minute. The, one of the mm-hmm. opening shots is of Jihu putting on his shirt with a naked chest. They I mean. have the obligatory, yeah, he, I mean, I mean, he looks good. And then yeah. they have the obligatory uh, Yi Min Ho crying in the shower. And then they have the beach scene where he strips in front of John D. And I've got mm-hmm. all these things memorized. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's so, got a bookmark, folks. <laughs> right? I was like, whoa, she remembers the details. <laughs> so on a very basic level of like appealing to the senses this show delivers mm-hmm. um not just because of the boys but they're in exotic locations they're driving expensive cars they like race horses they shoot you know skeet they uh you know they, they snap their fingers and fireworks go off I'm right. Right. <laughs> I was complaining to my husband today I'm like why don't you ever do yeah. that for me <laughs> they 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 destroy the environment when when the uh, when they have a, sh- a shot of them in a helicopter and he points down and there's a giant green heart in the swamp that he no doubt sent his minions down there to create a heart in the swamp for her. It was a line in the helicopter. last episode when he has set up the lights or whatever for their one of their final dates and he's like, this is easy compared to grassland management. <laughs> right, right, but that, right. Yeah. But that yeah. heart so. is actually really, really, really famous. Oh, okay. Um, so oh. he didn't do it. No, oh, okay. no, 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 no. It, it's quite, it's quite fam- famous. And um, photographer uh, Jan Artus Bertrand um, is quite famous for having put it hit on the cover of his book of photographs, where he photographed things around the world. Oh, okay. And I and and it, and it is, it does have an environmental twist. So I find that really amusing. That um, you know, they're just you know your comment about them destroying the environment but this is yeah it's really it's okay really, oh, really i'm really glad to hear that that was my reaction okay. my yeah. reaction was okay. like they went in the swamp and like destroyed yeah this. Made a but, heart. and then the whole macau sequence right uh oh. when they you know they fly off to you know it was so pretty ah it was so pretty it was so pretty yeah. so just on the visual feast level this show really delivers mm-hmm. so you know and it's got a shallow appeal of like yeah i want to look at you know, hot yeah, guys yeah. in foreign locales and doing and yeah, the fantasy of things. this ordinary look ordinary ish looking girl yeah. has multiple hot guys swooning uh, over her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, not just like the two main guys, but like that model dude. Right? She had yeah. all the guys, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's all the- and she was and she was so mad. I hated John. <laughs> 
and it, it was well you know she's but i mean but we we've discussed it's it's on purpose the idea is that you as the viewer have a point of entry into this story and your point of entry in the story is to identify with her she's so ordinary if anything she's like below ordinary and therefore you can insert yourself into that narrative very easily in her place it's like if you clipped her out of the magazine and put your picture into it and you could be part of that story but there's another um, thing in that she she is the fantasy also of someone that stands up to bullies i was about right? to say yes sort yeah, of I, in a well, way. I mean, in, in, sometimes yes, sometimes no, but at yeah. least in the, uh, I mean, her very introduction, the reason she gets the scholarship to the school is because she saves the guy who's trying to commit suicide off exactly. by jumping off the roof. And um, so, you know, again, showing she's the only, everyone else is just standing by and showing that she she's heroic in her own yeah. way, but also, um, you know, she she stands up to other people bu being bullied, mm -hmm. and and is the only one that talks back to John exactly, Peter. yeah. And and he is just so taken aback. Later, we learn it's that his sister treats him the same way. <laughs> but you know, one of the epic scenes in each version is her doing this big, you know, spinning kick to his face, like she, you know, it. She, yeah. she's yeah. she's the fantasy of how we wish we could yeah. stand up to that school bully um yeah. that terrorized us in school yeah and to like piggyback off of that i was gonna say like in the beginning i actually was like oh okay she's not like so weak she's not she's actually standing up for herself and i actually like that despite the yelling i actually thought that she was you know a character who actually stood up to jim pyo and she affected him you know i think that's kind of what they we're aiming for to be honest that one girl that will change the bad guy I guess but yeah like you said I, I definitely think she wasn't as weak as um, usually they make the girls you know in this type of scenario so I yeah except that once she gets involved with Junpyo she well, yeah. collapses she does she does get she a little weak <laughs> a lot Excuse weak you me yeah <laughs> she becomes yeah. like completely in love ridiculously passive well okay so the, like <laughs> this is an entry point to a big discussion right about yeah. violence against women yeah. and bullying because it's not just about bullying i mean you know john she gets subjected to some literally life-threatening violence because of junpyo crazy actually. almost gets raped because wow. of him right yeah I mean, yeah. he doesn't explicitly tell the guys to do that. In fact, he's horrified that they took his kind of instructions to give her a hard time, meaning, or, you know, whatever it was phrased, you know, mm -hmm. um, that they took it to that level, you know, uh, but... But that yeah, doesn't I mean, it's, it's like it's, he said, No, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, a laundry, <laughs> it's a laundry list of all the fears that young women have. Yeah. you know especially re-watching it again mm -hmm. it's the the fear of being slut shamed uh you know even yeah. if you didn't even deserve it like you know the mean girls are are saying writing on the chalkboard that she had an abortion of, yeah of being of being trapped into having pictures taken against your will of being um uh drugged and unconscious from somebody slipping you a drink in a bar it's like every laundry list yeah. of every fear that a young woman would have of things that would happen to her happened to her you it know my, so crazy. you know i mean well, my husband couldn't believe it is most of it is because of jumpio i mean she, her near rape is because of him and he she's saved by jihu but doesn't pick him Picks the dude who almost got the rape. <laughs> the dude wow, you're such a rape. Don't get dude, me yeah. started. <laughs> and Junpyo <laughs> tries to violently force a kiss on her. I don't know if you guys remember yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I and remember. Then, and then he um, he has her drugged and kidnapped, stripped, <laughs> oh. and redressed to meet his standards of how she was supposed to look. Yep. And that, you know, and then, um, and yeah, it's just like, there's so many instances where her life is literally directly in harm's way because of him. Yeah. And yet she falls in love with him. Well, why? I mean, you know, why? it's crazy. <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's like, oh, seriously, yeah. It's, it's a big, I completely agree. 
And she never even agrees. She never consents to go out with him. I don't think she, there's a point where she affirmatively says, yes, I want to be with you. Nope. Nope. Yeah, he, he just says, like, meet, me, meet me at this place at four o'clock. Yeah. Don't be late or you're yeah. dead. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> Do you want to die? You want to die or like be that, with me? Oh, God. That whole sequence in, in uh, New Caledonia, like I had such mixed emotions about it because on the one hand, I was like, gee, who you shit? Why are you kissing your <laughs> The girl ah. has a crush on you, asshole. Uh, you know, and Chandi, why did you accept this expensive vacation from somebody and then kiss his best friend? This is like really messed up. But then I thought, yeah. but then, but then Junpyo never asked her if she wanted to go on the trip. She yeah. was into going. He just dragged yeah. her into the plane and said, yeah. "I called your parents already. They're they're thrilled that you're with me." <laughs> you're like, wow. Her yeah. parents were willing to sell her. Literally, First of all, they were a mess. <laughs> I, I can't deal with that parody. <laughs> yeah, thinking about how all the times that she was out all night or gone for days or literally in the hospital and her parents didn't know or care. You know, at some point, I forgot that they were even in high school because I was like, what is going yes. on? Like, it felt so far fetched. Like, it was, it so was crazy, but- ridiculous. I mean, but you know, we really got it. Really, I was like wondering. So, we, we talked about this before we, we recorded um, that, in my opinion, when you have a narrative like this, it's because it's about women, straight women, reconciling the fact that they have sexual desire and romantic feelings for the people who are statistically the most likely to kill them and to rape them and hurt them. That's just a fact. Um, that's not all men. My husband's not like that. I, my husband's a wonderful person. I've met wonderful men in my life. I'm not saying, you know, but if you look at the numbers, uh, if you're a woman, the person who's most likely to murder you is your spouse or boyfriend. Mm-hmm. One thing I was thinking about, I'm a big romance genre uh, book reader. And the history of romances, they're called, the, the books from the 80s, the very first ones, like The Flame and the Flower by Kathleen Wood was, um, literally have rape scenes in them. And mm-hmm. the ones from the 80s, I mean, now modern romance are very much about consent and um safe sex and and you know all sorts of things but at the beginning uh they're literally called bodice rippers because in order for these women to read this and kind of reconcile their desire well you know i couldn't help it he raped me you know and then they fall in love with their rapist and and you know they're married against their will or whatever it is you know in these in these early novels and The origins of this manga are from 1992, not too far away from that time. So you're right. I think it's, there's a lot of things going on with um, young women reconciling to their, um, you know, desire. And and like one of the last episodes, um, her best friend is having a conversation with Kim, Kim Bunn's character. And he says, I'm a cool guy. I'm not a good guy. And she says, your misconception is that good girls want the good guy. <laughs> That's the entire show in a nutshell. You yeah. know? And you know, you know, but you know that oh. no, I'm sorry. I just because Melanie, you said something about it, like that that this is something back like back 30 years ago. However, Twilight is not old. Yeah, that's true. And Twilight that's true. has the same theme. Edward yeah. wants that's to true. literally rip. Bella's throat out and drink all her blood and and consume her. Um, Outlander is another one Mm -hmm. that is uh, very violent. Outlander is so violent that I tried watching and it made me sick and I couldn't watch it. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a scene where she gets punched in the stomach and beaten, like severely beaten on camera. It's awful. I was like, okay, I'm out. (laughs) Can't watch this. Um, Go ahead, Vicky. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, ironically, for some reason, watching twilight watching you know boys with flowers there was not never a, a, a thought in my head that i actually wanted to date junpyo or edward in real life for some random reason while i enjoy you know of course seeing them they look good and maybe shift the lead couple once or twice there was never thought that personally i would ever want to date a guy like that and i think that was maybe my take from it that was uh, that allowed me to watch Boys with Flowers was the fact that I was able to kind of um, separate reality 
from fiction because while I was enjoying it on the screen, there's no way I would ever want a man like that in, in right. my life. You know what I mean? So it is it is interesting how you brought up the fact that a lot of this trope is done because young women kind of, you know, find themselves fantasizing about these horrible men. But I really, I really think eh, it depends. It depends because I, well, I like seeing them on screen. There's absolutely no way I would ever give a guy like Gideon Pio a chance, you know? Well, and I think we do have to, I mean, you brought up a really good point, Vicky, really important because the fact that women consume these fantasies does not yeah. mean that in real life they want somebody to beat the exactly. shit out of them or like get yeah. them raped. Or, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. like you can have yeah. a fantasy that is just a fantasy and that mm-hmm. in real life you would never exactly. want to be in a situation like that. Absolutely. But I do think there's something going on psychologically and emotionally about how you're reconciling yourself to these really harsh realities that women have to confront in their relationships and um you know um it's it's also yeah it's also the fantasy of taking that bad boy and taming Mm, yeah i mean that is the entire like when jen pio gets amnesia at the very last episodes he reverts back to the old mean uh, right you know who's yeah. mean to everybody and so oh, that's in a way so i know but that's in a way to show you how far he had come you know that that she had tamed him mm-hmm. and and without john d in his life this is who he would have been and yeah but it's in but i don't think he's ever truly tamed i mean like he's exactly. tamed in terms of not being violent to john d sort of i mean he sort of is <laughs> even to the end i mean he's grabbing her he's yanking her all over the place he's yelling mm-hmm. at her he's berating her i mean that doesn't go away in the story i mean so he doesn't like threaten her life yeah. that's an improvement but it's not like, which is funny Catherine because i think really quiet by the way yeah <laughs> I was gonna say, I think in some ways too, like uh, John D was also like, as far as verbally wise, she was also hitting him back too. Like as far as verbally, you know what I mean? Like she wasn't like I watched. There's certain things she would say to him as well, like you know, you stupid. Like you, it, like they were definitely, I would say, a bit toxic for each other. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> But I thought it was really interesting, too, because we saw some of us saw different versions of this story. And in the yeah. other versions of the story, um, Makino and Shansai are violent, physically violent towards the male lead. They slap oh, wow. him, they kick him, they punch him after not just the big roundhouse kick that happens at the beginning of the story. But there are later instances of physical violence against the, the men that happen later on. So it is a violent relation. And the, and the manga, oh my God, the manga. <laughs> It's horrifying. The manga is crazy. I couldn't get over it. Like um, uh, Dom Yuji in the manga, full on roundhouse slaps Makino across the face early on in the story before they're even dating. Like just roundhouse. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the story oh, is wow. violent. Yeah. In general, they're both just crazy people put together. <laughs> But, I, but but what was interesting to me is I started thinking about it and like the way it's framed in the other versions of the story is that the female lead is such a strong person herself that mm-hmm. she kind of desires an overpowering, overwhelming, devouring expression mm-hmm. of love. And that's why she's in love with the Junpyo character and not with the Jihu character. The Jihu character isn't violent. He's in fact the only man in the narrative who's a lead man in the narrative, who's not violent. Yeah. He almost never mm-hmm. gets into fights. The other members of the F4 are brawling it up all over the place, right? And Jihu mostly isn't. There's a couple of places where he is, but mostly not. And, um, and that seems to disqualify him from being with the female lead. It's like, he's not violent enough to be with her because the violence itself is an expression of the passion and the idea is that the woman wants to feel the full weight of that passion from the man and that that means he loves her well i mean she did kind of um, like him at one point so i'll give her that yeah i think she, she had did. good taste oh, gee, like yeah. you know <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know just that uh, junpio just kind of manipulated her and won her over <laughs> but whatever i had <laughs> cancer and you're being you're being very quiet right <laughs> i want to say something come Kathy. on come on I'm, I'm not sure where to interject myself i think i think though that what I'm reacting to 
is in it's gotten worse this past year with the pandemic but i've always been kind of sensitive to this kind of <clears throat> violent um abuse or borderline or full on abusive relationship and um it always makes me very upset no matter whatever else is going on and I've been sort of jokey about the whole thing, but quite honestly, this story does make me cry. Um, it makes me very upset. And then I start to say, well, well, okay, if it if we're looking at the story as being of its time from you know the early 90s, why do we get remake after remake after remake right up to you know this year the the Thai remake? Because the audience loves it, ironically. So, so, you know, I'm, I'm obviously got to be the odd person out in, in the way I react to this. It's okay to be the odd. I mean, it's yeah. messed up. I it think, is. Though, and the thing, but the thing is, it's like, I think it's, it's hitting a really imp important and unresolved cultural fault line. Yeah. And that's why it keeps getting remade. And that's why you have Twilight and newer mm. versions of this same narrative. And it's an old story. If you look at Jane Eyre and how Rochester treated Jane Eyre, he was violent towards her. Yeah. Like when she escapes the house after she finds out about the wife, um, she's afraid of him. He's grabbing her and he's hurting her. And she's thinking, how do I get out of here without him harming me? Yeah. So this is an old story, right? Yeah. And it's unfortunately still resonant today. And which despite, the, despite my very um, strong reaction to it all, um, in a way, I'm glad we did take the time to, to look at all these issues and look at all the different iterations because it has made me think about it a little more and has made me think, about why I'm reacting to it in this way. Yeah, and I think it would be concerning if everybody loved this or thought it was such a perfect show. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's definitely not. So it's interesting to see varying opinions. I think I love the fact that there's so many different thoughts and everybody has different ideas because it opens room for discussion. And I think that's what really makes it a classic, to be honest, is this idea that you're able to dissect so much about this one story you know so yeah and yes. I think I yeah think I no, react to, to, I'm sorry go ahead I think I react to it so strongly that I mean you know I was very 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 resistant to, to calling it a classic yeah and I think that that's purely because I have I have this strong reaction to the drama um less less so from other versions of the of the manga um that have been created quite honestly like the Japanese version I kind of went, what is this? This is not the same thing at all. And even we were, you know, we were talking um, last night about the Taiwanese uh, meteor garden, about how the, you know, the male lead is, is more, um, oh God, what was the word I used? Vulnerable. 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 He gives yeah. him some vulnerability. Um, but the female lead there too is smart and introspective. Um, which I don't think we see a lot of in the in the Korean version. Yeah, I was so angry at the Korean version after seeing the other versions of it because they ruined the female character. And I don't think the story really works without having the str re truly strong female lead. Because first of all, it feels less abusive because it feels like she can hold her own against the male lead and that they're more evenly matched and that the male lead is actually vulnerable to her in turn, in a real way, and can be wounded by her and can be, you know, suffer because of her. And it's a very different dynamic than the Korean version that have baffled why the Korean version did what they did with that character. I don't get it. Because like with, yeah, with um, Jerry Yan plays the uh, male lead in uh, the Taiwanese version and Jerry Yen's great I actually thought he put in a great performance and he really that's his character's scary I was joking around that he's a walking uh restraining order because of how violent he is <laughs> but at the same time I found him the most sympathetic of the three iterations of this character because of that vulnerability and Shan Tsai is such a badass. She's so strong, not because she's superhuman, you know, not because she's like, you know, it's not a cartoonish portrayal. It's just that she has a strength of character that is is unshakable through the story. 
And the and way that, that what... story is told, it's there's a lot of voiceovers and we're hearing her internal thoughts. And so, I don't know, there's something, I found the production values kind of a barrier for me, but I did appreciate all those voiceovers. Um, you know, like we're, instead of just seeing John D kind of, you know, looking at things in her desk drawer and whatever, it, but in the end, us having a musical montage, it's like we're, re, we're really getting an insight into uh, Shankai's uh, feelings, her thoughts, her, you know, her, her um, puzzling out, who is this guy? And, and why, why did I seem to hurt him by, you know, doing that or whatever, you know, I agree that you see a vulnerability, you know, it's, it's sort of like the, the schoolboy that pulls the pigtails. It's like, he doesn't know how to tell her, I like you, except by annoying her. <laughs> yeah, know, or like he's much. someone, he's rich. So the two things he has is he's, he's wealthy and he's, he's violent. So he tries wealth. He tries to buy her and then he tries to bully her. And then he, neither one of those things work to get her to love him. And then he has nothing and he's flailing and he's just like, doesn't have an idea. And he desperately loves her and just is utterly failing in, in figuring out what to do to win her. Mm -hmm. It's a really different story from Junpyo who always feels in charge somehow. In oh, Boys I didn't Flowers. feel that. I didn't feel you that. Know, I felt uh, like, except no. well, not with his mother. <laughs> but No, I, I felt like there were moments. I don't think there was uh, maybe the depth, but I definitely was examining like, what was it about, uh, you know, Imanho playing this part versus I've seen him Legend of the Blue Sea and some of these other things and I do think it was the vulnerability and the poor little rich boy who's so lonely um that did really appeal to me the first time that I saw Boys Over Flowers yeah. and I don't know that he I don't know that he has had that same magic pixie dust in other uh roles that I have seen him do and I haven't finished King Eternal Monarch I don't know but there was there was something about his vulnerability in Boys Over Flowers when you just you know I mean all the scenes of the poor little curly-headed <laughs> kindergartner getting <laughs> getting you know having all the staff give him the Christmas presents and all of I that like Catherine is losing it <laughs> I agree I agree I was immune to those scenes. I thought they made me laugh. I did not feel any sympathy for that little boy other than he had to have his hair permed. I always felt bad for the actor. <laughs> I felt so sore. And, and everybody makes fun of that hairdo. And I felt so sorry for Iman Ho and for the young actor who had to do that. And like when they're, when they're in um, uh, New Caledonia and the perm just goes... <laughs> Oh, this poor man. Like I, I really feel for him. And when you if you look at the if you look at the manga, you can see what they were trying to do with yeah. him. Yeah. And they were it, it relaxes a little. You know that there are subtle changes in their hair in the last few air episodes, including in his where they allow it to sort of relax a bit more. And I thought, oh, he must be so grateful not to have to get that done every every time he goes on camera you know I'm in the minority but for some weird reason after I got used to it because I paused the show for like the first time around I was watching it and then when I got used to the hairstyle I actually thought he looked nice with it I don't know I don't know I actually kind of was like okay he kind of makes it work after a while it kind of worked with his outfit and him looking mm -hmm. like a model it kind of worked and the fur collar yeah and the, the fur collar he, he's, a he's a very handsome guy yeah you know? and, and so, so yeah that kind of won me over just like Melanie said there really was a certain charm to how he played Junpyo that made me a fan because that was the first time I ever watched anything with him in it and after that I was like give me every Lee and Ho drama <laughs> afterwards um so I am a bit biased I'm, I'm a fan I am a fan um but Boys with Flowers was definitely the opening for me to get it, to know him so that's why I can't hate it I think that's probably why I think a part of me kind of uh, because it's like you know it kind of was a segue for me in K-drama world and so mm -hmm. I have this nostalgic kind of feel to it because it was like my first drama that I really gave my all and watched. So I can't completely hate it, but it's not the best drama in the world. It's actually really ridiculous. So it's, it's hugely it's kind, of, it's oh, kind of crazy that it is the first drama that hooks so many right? people. 
it's ironic because some people hate it. Some people watch it and they're like, wait a minute, this is what K dramas are. And then they, they don't want to watch anything. But we watched it and we're like, hey, <laughs> give me more. <laughs> well, it wasn't my first one. If it had well, been yeah. my first, I don't know if I would have kept going. It was mine. It was mine. I was, oh I was my gosh. I was, just going to, I was just going to say that I was really grateful that whoever was recommending dramas for me didn't, they must have had a clue that I, that I wouldn't, it wouldn't connect with me. Because I think I probably would have got there anyway, but I think I would have walked away for a long time if this was my first. So oh. again, one of the things I've had to ponder the last couple of weeks is like so many people it's their first drama and they just plunge in and adore it. And then they go for everything else. So I've, ha I've had to, to muddle, muddle that through in my head too, of why I, I still don't think I have an answer. Although some of the conversations we're having around this are, are really helping. No, I really do think though, because it's taking some very atavistic base things in our society with regards to men and women and sex and relationships that uh and then but, but but wraps them in this candy coating I, the way i was describing it on twitter was that it's like a rainbow slurpee that isn't good for you but you can't yeah. help but drink the whole thing and then you feel a little yeah. sick afterwards that's what it's this is like for me you summed it perfect <laughs> i think that's what it was because mm -hmm. the 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 Korean version i saw the Korean version first and i was like oh my god you know what the excuse me what the f did i just watch and then i went and um what ooh, excuse me i watched the japanese version and i was horrified because i went oh my god the korean version is less problematic than the japanese version <laughs> and then i watched the taiwanese version it's even more problematic and then you go to the manga and your head might you know falls off your neck and rolls away because it's horrifying horrifying the level of violence against women and the misogyny and the near multiple near rapes like Jun, like Jun, the junpyo character almost rapes makino in the in the manga yeah um it's it's uh, it's really something <laughs> it's really something so i think that but here's okay so this is a note i made and i think it's really important because i and i wish it was my idea it was something i read but in a culture where a woman can't say no, she can't also say yes. And so if you say yes, you're a slut, you're a whore, you're a tramp. So the fantasy becomes that a man overpowers you to give you the opportunity to, to fulfill the desire you already really wanted, mm. even though you're protesting, no, 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 mm. yeah. that there is a fantasy about that. And I think this show hits that really it hard. It does, it does. Mm -hmm. um, which is why, especially with John D, not so much, like some of the other versions of the character, not so much, but John D is actually really passive. I mean, this, yeah. after she, it's it, it all goes to hell after she kisses Jihoo. Jihoo sucked the life out of her, and then she just becomes this passive character. <laughs> and, and she becomes completely spineless and lets everyone run her around, and she can't swim anymore. Like the man who can't swim can swim better than her suddenly and fishes her out of the pool. So and in conclusion, can't... Jihu is the problem. <laughs> Jihu is the problem. It's all Jihu's fault. Let's talk about Jihu for a second because I was so in love with Jihu in this. It wasn't even funny. It really? made me deranged. Yes. Confession. I was in hysterics. Confession. I, this was the first time in my life I did not have second lease syndrome. I don't know why. And I think partly was because people who suggested me to watch Boys of the Flowers had already imprinted in my head that Jun Pyo was like the lead. So I went into this not even looking at the other guy. But a part of me was not really phased by Ji Hu as much as I wanted to be. Like, I, I, I personally, I mean, of course, he was a sweet guy, but then I was not really like into it as much as I thought I would be which is interesting to me I, I would like to hear your thoughts actually like well I was the totally opposite because I had nothing for Yi Min Ho I mean he's he's a very handsome guy but I felt nothing for him at all no I had no sympathy for him either I didn't yeah. think of him as the vulnerable okay. little boy I was just like you you're an ass and I don't like you um mm. Jihoo what I love so okay so this is funny I'm gonna get yelled at again by 
Kim Hyun Jung's fans, but he oh. cannot act. I don't say this in a bad way because he was an idol. It was his first role, right? So, you know, and he's a good musician. I actually have gone to his YouTube channel and I listen to his music and I legitimately like it. He's actually a good musician. Okay, don't hate me, fans. <laughs> and I love Jihoo. Um, but I've actually mentioned too the, the point of having an idol star in a drama. And because uh, we've talked about that with, with, um, with, with other dramas we're, we've looked mm -hmm, at. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there is a very valid point to get them in there because you're going to get a section of an audience that adores them. Right. Um, oh, yeah, and, sure. And some of them are very raw early on, and some of them work hard at it and get really good at it. Yeah. Right. I mean, I look at someone like Dio. Oh, Dio, yes. Who early, oh, yeah. early on, I went, oh, my God. This oh, yeah. Guy. He went into it an actor, an actor deal. That's, and then that's... all of a sudden, he did A um, Hundred Days My Prince and Swing Kids. And I went, amazing. Dear <laughs> Lord. Yeah. He's I talented. should not have, I should not have said, oh, the kid's an idol star. So are you, are you as well? Yes. 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 That's who okay. I was going to say. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My so master. Oh, my God. So, yes. you know, but there the is. Thing... There's oh. a very valid place for an idol star to come in, particularly in a drama like this. I'm yeah. not anti-idol. And to be honest, his acting wasn't significantly worse than the other actors. I don't think anybody was putting in a phenomenal star turn yep. in this. I mean, even yeah. Lee Ho, who is the, the who really became the star coming out of this, I would not say his performance was amazing, you know, just from an acting mm -hmm. point of view. Mm -hmm. It's what it was. It, and it's it was totally adequate yeah <laughs> to yeah yeah, for yeah, this yeah. but but, but the I was, point but with, but with the point, oh go ahead the point but the point is if we're saying you know a particular actor in this is not very good we're not saying he's not ever going to be good further along we're just saying at this particular moment in time this is our perception of it. You're nicer than me because I actually don't care if he's good later on or not or improves. I <laughs> no, actually don't is... have any investment in it. But, 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 the, but the point but point about him in this drama is I think that they were working around some of his limitations and inadvertently because they were working around his limitations ended up having some really lovely moments between him and Chandi where they don't have any dialogue and they're just doing things together. And they're and nice. He's, and he's shyly smiling. Right, right. Or like, for example, when she's cleaning the... I love his smile, though. Let me just say. Yeah. Well, he's pretty handsome, too. He is. The, the Performing Arts Center, when she's cleaning it by herself and he comes out and sees her and he just walks over to her and doesn't say anything, he rolls up his sleeves and he starts cleaning next to her. Or when... Um, her brother, this is the one that sent me round the bend and I got hysterical is when his brother, her brother falls asleep at the housewarming party mm. and he gets up, makes a bed for him and carries him to bed and tucks him in without saying <laughs> anything. And it's just like, oh, or when they go to the temple together and they write good wishes for each other on the bells of the temple, there's these wonderful little character building moments that they have together where they're like, the relationship you can tell how much he cares about her by the things he's doing for her yeah junpyo shoots off fireworks you know jihu is like <sighs> making sure she's eaten or you know uh, gives yeah. her a place to live like yeah we can never love gets her an apartment even after his mother destroys the building she lives in and he never makes sure that she has housing <laughs> Meanwhile, Jihu is letting her move in with him. You know, I, the, the whole thing made me nuts. I was insane by the end of it. I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe she ended up with that ass. Of like not recognizing that love isn't about these big showy gestures. It's about someone who takes care of you. And yeah. in the story, Jihu takes care of her. And so I, yeah, I was like not sane on that point. I was yelling at my computer. I was just beside myself. And the funny thing is I didn't get that way in the other versions of the story. I didn't have second lead syndrome in Hana Yori Dango or Media Garden because they did a better job of, of convincing you why this couple would, should be together, the lead couple should be together. But in Boys Over Flowers, forget it. I think Korean dramas yeah. are really good with second lead syndromes in general. Like they yes. are, they make their second lead sometimes so darn good that you're just like, how? Who would ever pick the lead over this man? But yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I know there was recently one in startup, which I oh my yet. gosh, oh my don't God. get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I take that to I take that so personal. Yeah. Like one day, oh my God. Yeah. One day we should have a complimentary episode for startup just alone because I just ah oh, I got so much to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say, when I saw uh, Kim son for the first time in Good Manager, and he had this tiny little role, and I yes. said, to, my, I said to, to Rob, this kid, yes. like, we've got to yes. keep watching him. And he just got better and better and better. And yeah. I, I was heartbroken. Like, normally, I don't, I do, I don't suffer from second lead syndrome all that much. But startup, it was like... Start up. I can't what? even rave about the show because I'm still hurt. It just, it just, <sighs> they hurt me. <laughs> Vicky, I've just, got a I picture. Like I've got act. a sticker of him on my laptop as we speak. Like, oh my just... God. <laughs> I love him. Okay. <laughs> Woo. Right. All right. We got really our own little fan I've club. Him and other stuff, and I do like him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't you know. know there's just... some, yeah. It, when, uh, coming back to Jihu, it, uh, re watching it. You had pointed out in our chat about this episode that there what the the model character his that his his crush that I can't remember her name that at one point she mentions that as a child he was autistic. Mm-hmm. And I didn't I don't remember that I caught that. And then and then it, it's like okay, maybe you see a through line with that. And then you know, rewatching again, I was laughing because when the great his grandfather insists that John D move into their house, um, then he says, I'm just trying to be her guardian. I can't see her with you, you're too stoic. <laughs> I was just laughing that the grandfather was just like <laughs> You're not the right messed guy. up messed up his own grandson's life. thanks thanks granddad <laughs> you abandoned me and then yeah well gee who gives a little smile as he always does <laughs> <laughs> um but actually unfortunately this is a little bit of a segue like all of this stuff about violence and bullying blah 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 in the fictional world also exists in the real world and i did want to mention some of the stuff that's been going on unfortunately which makes this more resonant and important, unfortunately. Um, There was, in early March, a huge uh, scandal broke in Korea involving multiple industries, sports, K-pop, and K-dramas, with people being accused of bullying. And there was one actor in particular where the accusations were incredibly ugly. Uh, His name is Jisoo, and he was actually accused of sexual assault of a middle schooler. And I don't wanna get into the details because it is truly ugly and gross and and sad. Um, That is an evolving situation. I don't know where that's gonna land and and it likely will change by the time this this show uh, airs. But um, unfortunately, you know, these are real issues. I mean, these are things that school girls are facing in school. Like John D isn't just like a fictional character. There's actually girls who are being assaulted in school yeah I mean watching it like I said my husband's walking through and and I said is this show resident he's like it's so sadistic he's like they're fetishizing the bullying they don't just show it they show it again from this angle and they show it again from that angle and um you know having his perspective of some of those scenes where John D's being pelted with fire extinguisher you know hope you know and and eggs being and vegetables being pelted at her and I and and he's right and I was just like you know I don't have a perspective because are are they making this extreme or does bullying of a severe degree that I can't even comprehend exist in Korean schools and you know what I'm saying and then and then this news you know I mean this news when I read up about what Jisoo had done, like it was worse than I could have ever have possibly imagined. And I I was just, um, I I was just horrified. And like you said, it was middle school. So, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, is that part of what resonates with this drama is that it's really exploring some extreme bullying situations that do exist in reality. I mean, I we had the recent drama, Itawan class, it didn't have sexual bullying, but it had severe 
uh, school bullying as the mm -hmm. setup for the first um, couple of episodes. So, you know, obviously this is a, a problem that continues and it's, I'm not saying we don't have bullying in American schools, but it's just uh, what they're showing in these shows is of another level. Well, and the other thing, so I have my little laundry list. Sorry, guys, this is the bummer part of the, it's got a lot yeah, of bummer, yeah. bummer, bummer, bummer parts of this episode. Kim Hyun Jung, who played Ji Hoo, uh, was involved in a very ugly scandal that is not really resolved uh, completely. So in 2014, he admitted to domestic violence against his girlfriend and issued a public apology and paid her a financial settlement. Um, they briefly got back together and she got pregnant with a son who he has no contact with. And then she made more accusations against him in the media, which he denied and sued her over saying that they were false accusations and uh, he won. Uh, and it, she uh, appealed and it went to the Korean Supreme Court and he won in November, 2020. So the final appeal was won by him just in November. Um, and in the middle of all that, he had a, a drunk driving conviction. So his life got really messy. And then he went to the military because that's what you do. You go off to the military and you like, lay low for a while. I'm laughing. It's not really funny. Anyway, he's back and he is attempting a career revival in Korea and Korea is saying hell no uh, to him. And I suspect that his career will never be revived in Korea. That he does have a big international following as we inadvertently discovered when I tweeted about him and got slammed by his fans. Uh, but um, so he has a big fan base in uh, Latin America and Japan. So he's not gonna starve, but he's basically his career in Korea is dead. So that's a very ugly uh, situation connected with the drama. And then finally, the worst thing connected with this drama, which is horrible, is one of the actresses, her name is uh, Chang Cha Yun who was like one of the three girls who bullied um, uh, John D, uh, committed suicide because her manager was pimping her out or forcing her to give sexual services to his clients. And she committed suicide very shortly after the show went on the air. So, you know, like we talk about this stuff in the fictional world, but this stuff exists in the real world and very close to the drama itself you know, a and um, I don't know, you know, it's it's hard. And we've, we've had these discussions before we should have it now about like, at what point do you draw as a fan where you go, I can't consume this anymore. I can't watch this anymore. Uh, or do you just say, you know what? I've, uh, there's a lot of ugly things that happen. I'm still gonna watch these things because if you don't. Uh, Catherine, you mentioned this like in the Malayalam, Malayalam, Malayalam is one of the languages in India and their cinema had such an enormous sex scandal that if you stopped watching everybody involved, you would have to stop watching Malayalam films. Um, so I don't have an easy answer to this. I don't have any, you know, I wish I could say, well, I'm so upright that I won't watch anybody. And is it true? I mean, I do watch people who've done ugly things. Um, so I don't know if you guys have thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I think it's not easy. I mean, and and somewhat, it's it's case by case. Like after stuff came out about Woody Allen, did I never watch another one of his films? Like I think I did, but at this point, with stuff that's coming out with a recent HBO documentary, I think I'm done. Like I don't need to ever see Annie Hall again, and I don't. I mean, he's going to, somebody is going to give him money and he's going to continue making films, but I don't know that I need to watch them. Like, um, you know, child abuse maybe is my line in the sand, but I mean, there's, there's so many creators and actors who have um, problematic histories right now. Army Hammer is going through huge scandals here in Hollywood. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's sort of like if someone says something bad about Keanu Reeves, I'm going to lose it. Let's just put it that way. Like, well, you know, for like, what please. it's worth, I know people who've worked with him and they all love him and they think he's great. So well, thank you. It's a the point on Twitter when I see actor, singer, name plus school, I go, oh God, well, who now? Yeah. 
And sometimes it's just organizations using those terms for clickbait. And it has nothing to do with another scandal, which, which I mean, there are whole problematics around that as well. Um, I think I draw a harder line than many people. Um, again, because this stuff really upsets me. Although, even to say that, I mean, you know, in the Malayalam cinema, the actor at the center of that, I call him the actor who will not be named because I will not say his name. And I don't care how much clout he has in that industry. I am not watching a film with him in it. And I refuse to. Um, the whole, I mean, everything that happened around with last year, the year before with the Burning Sun scandal too, and a whole bunch of people got blown out of the water at that time. And that was another horrifying you know, scandal in terms of, um, you know, filming, filming sexual encounters with women without their consent. And in, in the case of, of one of the people who has gone to prison, who again, I will not name, um, he had had an incident. He was on two days, one night, the variety show. He'd had an incident. It was in, and he was pulled off the show and they went on without him for several months until the thing was investigated and cleared and he was cleared by the police and the show invited him back on this is why the jisoo thing as soon as i saw it was kbs because two days when i just kbs um anyway so he was he was invited back onto the show within about three months after he had been removed which again is rare usually they do do a timeout of some sort um and then the second set of scandals revealed that the first one had just been a cover up and everybody was was horrified and i think that was the start of people really deciding not to let any of this go um the the jung chayon scandal was reopened again around the time of of burning sun it just it just blew everything up um, so yeah, so my my line is if we are, if you are convicted of this um, or there's firm evidence of this, I don't want to see you on screen. I was really grateful to hear that um, the the drama that Jisoo, Jisoo dropped out of is going to reshoot the first six episodes. Yeah, yeah. like I, I agree. I, I couldn't start that drama because I, I I thought I can't watch him. Mm -hmm. I really can't. Yeah. Same, same as Catherine. I, I draw the line completely. Like if I, if I don't care for you, I don't care for you. Like, I'm not going to watch anything you're in. I'm not going to talk about you. You're kind of pushed to the side for me once that kind of happens. And there are so many decent people. And it sucks. Actors, yeah. It's really singers. disappointing. So, really you know, I can go find, I have, I have a handful mm -hmm. already of faves who don't. Oh my God. My don't. list of actors. <laughs> You know, if I can yeah. find unproblematic faves, then yeah. why would yeah. I go where where I know I'm going to just get emotionally upset? You're right. Yeah, but, right. but I do think everybody has to find that line for themselves. That's true. Yeah, I'm not as um, pure as you guys are because I'm thinking about with Indian films in particular, you have a, a lead actor, a very big lead actor named Salman Khan, who mm -hmm. has gotten into so many scandals that I can't even list them all out. <laughs> is pretty bad I will but I still watch his I mean I'm not like a big fan of his genre of films so I don't you know go necessarily yeah. go seeking them out but like I did see Bharat which was um with his who as I love because I love his co-star uh mm -hmm. Katrina Kef so I don't know I mean it's hard to that's mm -hmm. where it does get hard yeah where, where you love other people in the cast mm -hmm. and there's that one problematic and you go oh but I really want to see her or yeah. him and they have great chemistry together because they used to be in a relationship and they're no longer in a relationship. And so um, they were, they're fantastic on screen together. And so, but I'm with uh, Melanie on Woody Allen, hell no. I won't watch any um, Roman Polanski movies. Mm. Uh, that's off the table now. Um, I don't even though, think I've ever watched a Woody Allen movie. They're brilliant movies. And that's what is sad because like Chinatown and Rosemary's Baby are legitimately brilliant films, oh. but I won't watch them. I mean, it's just well, I've never seen them. 
and I love Annie and I loved Annie Hall but I won't watch that either I as mean, Melody pointed out they will still find an audience and most of that audience oh, will yeah. be in France they always they always yeah, yeah find they'll an find audience. an audience they'll find and an I, audience. I, I say that as someone who lived in France for five years and when and I still listen to you know French radio to to keep things up and, and when Woody Allen's book came out um, when the translation came out in France, like there was no discussion around, or it was minimal. Oh, he's being accused of stuff, but like he's Woody Allen, and I was like, "Whoa, whoa, that's I'm surprised okay. at all." Because yeah, people justify. I mean, look at how people justified Chris Brown and what he did with uh, mm -hmm. Rihanna. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. It just yeah, and, it's, well, that's, it's not, it's, and I don't hold myself up as a pure. I'm not. Like, well, just most recently yeah. went with Kim Hyun Jung, I went to his YouTube channel. I went, oh, I like his music. <laughs> I actually listened to it because I actually like you know, he makes good music. Uh, should I not listen to it because of what happened? I don't know. Maybe and not. that's where it gets hard for me when it comes to music, because I love music and it sucks when music is associated with such a crappy person because it's like movies I can do, like I can avoid their movies seeing their face but it's like god i love this song and it's that's i think that's probably one of the hardest ones for me the well, music and, part and i mentioned two days one night i loved that third season and that cast and oh, i watched yeah. them from the beginning and i watched them over and over and over. i love the new cast i i <laughs> love the new cast too, but it's and and they're they're struggling under you know, pandemic rules in the way they can yeah. work. Oh, so they yeah, have, right. I, don't think, yeah. I don't think they've had, but the, the previous really? season, what the, the cast on there was terrific and they gelled and they took you around Korea and showed you Korea and Korea food and Korean food and Korean culture. And it was so great. And it was just, I, I, now I can't, I can't, I absolutely cannot watch that. And that was, and that was not only one person's career destroyed, that was, Almost every person in that cast was tossed off the show or had some kind of repercussions. And that's what sucks about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's why when this Jisoo uh, scandal broke, I my heart sunk. I hadn't started watching the drama, but they they had aired six episodes. They had filmed ninety five percent of the episodes of the drama, and and my heart just sunk for all the crew all the other cast members um you know i mean this was a big drama and and i was really uh pleased that they did make the decision to reshoot um i can't remember the actor's name but you know he he was a notable uh supporting actor in the recent mr queen and so i was like oh yeah good on him to get this um you know this replacement lead role and so and and now i'm pleased like you said just recently this week they've announced that they're gonna um refilm all the scenes uh with for the first six episodes that so be, which have been pulled from uh, video on demand services and so you know i want to watch it but i i can't i can't start you know like episode seven like that so so i'm yep. glad that they're doing that but wow what a financial you know wow <laughs> you yeah know, it's, I mean, it's a debacle and i mean all the other because he was in some some other stuff too uh that were big dramas right um yeah, i wrote it down was it strong woman scarlet strong woman? heart rayo that's the yeah. new one i think strong girl bong soon oh, no moon, and moon lover scarlet heart rayo. yeah and strong girl it's funny because moon lover that's my show that's like it's one of my shows and it's like kiss you god dang it uh but well, i'm just gonna have to fast forward fortunately at least with that one there's not the lead oh so, um, yeah and there's so many other you're right you're right it's <laughs> easy with it. that one hello the, and, <laughs> and it all bleeds together right because like i'm thinking about it like you have these real life scandals and you have to decide well am i okay with watching this performer or this director or whatever who's done bad things and then you have the fictional universes well am i okay with a universe where <laughs> misogyny and violence against women is a central part of the story it's quite and that's a good question that's a good take actually wow hmm. Because I was thinking about this a lot, like I saw, I didn't watch the whole thing because it's 50 episodes, so 2018 uh, version of Media Garden, which is another Hana Yorodango. I have not in fact seen every Hana Yorodango remake. 
just feels like I have. We're, we're so but disappointed watched, in you. <laughs> I know, I know. But I did watch a little bit of it because I just wanted it for reference. And it is way less toned down. Like they don't even have red tags in the in the story. And a lot of the violence is is non-existent. And you know what? It gets boring. It's a boring story. It's a teen drama without much tooth to it. And it's not really much of anything. So I, I mean, think- that's one thing that you can say about this drama. And I was just comparing it to many other shows. Like there's crazy crap happening all the way until episode 25. There's amnesia and then, you know, episode 24 or whatever. Like there's yeah. stuff that's constantly happening. There's not this sort of like, you know, the story peaked at episode 12 and then we're filled with product placement and montages for the last four episodes of a show. You know, I, I mean, it just has so much plot. There's so many things that really happen. And that's part of what's compelling about it. Um, and there's, well, the, it, you know, and there's, you know, there's sites, it- there's side stories for, at least three of the four guys. I can't remember the the the, the, the poor. Whooping gets no story in twenty five uh, episodes. He, he just he just gets one scene where he almost jumps off a bridge because he's the son of a mafia don. And I was like, that's it. That's all he yeah. gets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he get he gets all the English cool lingo. Yo yo dad. <laughs> And they dressed him, as I said, like an extra from Shaft. And I actually appreciated that about him. <laughs> I liked his wardrobe a lot. But I, I did go, okay, Junpyo's the rich guy who's the center of it all. And who's, you know, the music guy. And you've got pottery guy. And then you've got the extra from Shaft. Right, right, <laughs> right. With no story. But um, I was, you know, I, there, there's a name, I and mean, then Catherine, you can pronounce it probably better than me. Makjang is that Makjang? And I had mentioned that I found this very Makjang-like, which mm-hmm. is I, I think Makjangs are like um, I I would I would say they're closest to what we would understand in North America as a soap opera, mm-hmm. and yeah. they generally have. Um, I mean, their target audience is is like middle-aged women more or less I'm I know there are people who are going to say I'm oversimplifying and that's true um but and but they can also be I mean look at the number of people watching penthouse um Mm -hmm. the last (laughs) empress I adored the last empress and it was cracktastic and crazy the whole way through and the only thing wrong with it was they extended it by four episodes without realizing that the male one of the male leads already had other commitments so they it literally wrote around him and it was like what but apart from that it was it was glorious um you know the mukja is like where you get the kimchi slap and and the and the mother the potential mother-in-law throws the water in your face after offering you money to stay away from her son so there is something to that that is very appealing to an audience um Sky Castle was huge, absolutely huge. And you would watch other shows and you would see references to Sky Castle and references like even on on variety shows, they would they would reference Sky Castle. Um, So, you know, these these dramas exist for a reason and they can be enormously fun. And just because this one doesn't appeal to me doesn't doesn't mean that I don't get why that genre can be appealing. Because I right. don't think it's a straight mock junk is what it is. It's because there's something, it's more of like, um, to get highfalutin about it, a psychosexual drama uh, in a weird way. Like there is something really going on there around desire um, and the desire that Chandi has for Junpyo and that Junpyo has for Chandi. And, um, and I would but- say, um, I again, I don't have a lot of experience with anime, but that's kind of the vibe I got from it, right? Mm-hmm. Right from John D's school uniform, yeah, um, mm-hmm. to a lot of the stuff that that happens. And I guess there's a reason why that style of anime as well is is very appealing. And in a way, I kind of appreciate them trying. If that's what they were aiming for, I do appreciate what they were trying to do there because it can be challenging to do that, you know, live action. It's right. not the hairstyles well, well, hair hair and everything, you know. But that's what kind Twilight of... is. That's what Twilight is. I mean, you have that whole scene in the first film when when Bella confronts uh, Edward in the forest, 
and you know yeah. I know you're a vampire and he's like are you afraid and she says no and he's basically like well you should be he doesn't say that but he's basically saying that to her and there's this whole weird you know um she's compelled by him and the danger is the point like you can't take the danger out because it takes out the sex the sex and the danger are intertwined and I think that even though boys over flowers is like the you know, uh, trapper keeper version of this story that you see, you know, uh, but it nevertheless retains that. And, and with that element is much more present in other versions of this, but I really think that that's what, there's this weird, a, a weird sublimated sexual longing and theme going on through this story that I think can't be taken out. Like that's what the story is about. I mean, I do uh, think some things that make it more mock jung to me are that, you know, Jen Pio's mother is unreservedly evil. <laughs> she is <laughs> evil. Well, know? keeping the father in a coma in, in that house is hysterically funny to me because they, yeah. everybody can find John D no matter where she is in that house, but they couldn't find the father in a coma in the house. Like, that's special. <laughs> I just couldn't get over that. <laughs> like, what? Oh, and right. the secretary who was like playing both sides. Yeah. I yeah. like that actor though. I don't, I forgot. I don't know his name, but the actor who played the secretary is really great. Um, I mean, him. just all the things that happened to, to John D, you know, just so, I mean, they're so over the top. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, it's a mix, mix of all of these things together. I mean, we haven't really talked so much about some of the other um side characters after i i kim bum's uh character in this one always kind of appealed to me his little uh you know devilish smile and even more so after seeing him in tale of the nine tales which is the only other drama that i've seen him in and you know i mean he it's just interesting going back to the beginning right and and of that little devilish uh grin and his trying to scare off John D's best friend go, you know, like, I'm, you know, I'm a bad boy. You don't want to, you don't want me, <laughs> you, know, you know, look how bad I am. I'm going to want these other women in front of you. I'm so bad. <laughs> was anyone convinced he was really bad? I mean, <laughs> I personally didn't like that storyline and not because of Kim Bum. I just wasn't invested in that at all. The only thing about that, I, that, that I wondered specific to Chandi and Kaul is that Kaul got to be really cute in what I would consider like an idealized real girl way. Like her clothes look like, like you could actually buy them and wear them. And she was adorable, like someone that you would actually see in real life. And then they aggressively made John D look bad. I couldn't figure it out. Like her makeup. Vicky is losing it. <laughs> Am I wrong, Vicky? Am I wrong? It was horrible. You're absolutely correct. I couldn't figure it out like her makeup and I was like are they doing an homage to kabuki Japanese makeup because her makeup was so white. that outfit for Junpyo's birthday party is just so ugh. horrifying oh <laughs> I felt I did a screen cap and I labeled it what in the bow peep hell is going on here because <laughs> it was so bad it deserved so much better gosh and the thing is, they could have made, like I said, when they, there's pictures of her next to Kaul and, and she looks like, I'm like, why didn't they put John D in the similar clothing? I wonder, if it, was done on purpose. I, I wonder if it was done on purpose. because It, makes it was sense. done. On, I mean, I think it was done on purpose. It has to be. They were aggressively yeah. making her look bad because they were really playing up that she's just, and there's actually that whole speech that Junpyo gives, which made me, it, oh my God, where he, she's like, why me? Ha, I hear you die. <laughs> and then he's like, Well, I have money, I have looks, I have fame, I don't need any of that. You just need to be you. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> it was so annoying. <laughs> like at that point, I was like, gosh, you know what? <laughs> just get together and end the show, please. <laughs> the other thing, this is this is a little unkind, and I don't want this is I'm gonna get yelled at. I'm gonna say it anyway, is that the actress who played John D was older than the rest of the cast. And mm. she looked older than the rest of the cast. That is not the actress's fault, right? I'm not saying she looks old. She was only 25 when she made it. However, the rest of the cast was like around 19, 20 years old. And then they put her in clothing and makeup that did made her look older. It was aging. Yeah. 
And so they really did her dirty. I mean, she's supposed to be 16 years old in this thing. And she looks old, you know, she's calling these guys Sunday. Can we talk about that crap, by the way? How many, if you had a <laughs> game for every time either Chandi or Gaul said Sunday in shock, you'd be, you'd have alcohol poisoning after the first episode. Or every time. They were time, shocked every time they saw them. <laughs> or every time Chandi looks quizzical and goes, Go to Pyo. Go to Pyo. Or Jihu. Jihu Sunday. You know, I'm like, oh. You can see Catherine's face when she did that. <laughs> oh my God. It was. There were some really baffling choices made for her character, both in terms of dialogue, makeup clothing and also just stuff like how she ate i mean i guess she's an ordinary girl but do ordinary girls shovel food into their mouth and chew with their mouths open it was just like these weird and and the thing is i don't even blame the actress for this because i saw behind the scenes where the director was in, uh directing her to be more broad in a scene mm. it wasn't her fault it's like they made deliberate directorial choices to do that and i have no idea why I hated it so much yeah, especially the early episodes her performance is so broad and so over the top um she tones down you know by the last episodes but i don't yeah that's one reason why seeing the role done by the other actresses in the other versions was like oh wow look you know it um yeah it was just it made the uh, john d so much more annoying and again it's like you say it's not it's not all the actresses fault because that's the way they wanted it to be right they directed her that way well, and then ha jae kyung shows up and she has more chemistry with jun pyo fighting over a shoe yeah and john d in the whole thing and it was like there there is the girl you should be with I loved her. 100%. She was, she was so much cooler than Chandi. She was like feisty mm -hmm. and bat, you know, and she stood up to Jun Pyo and yeah. they had chemistry with each other. And like he calls her monkey and it's supposed to be uh, an insult, but it comes across as a know, cute right? endearment. It's like, what? Cute. I was like, wait a minute. I found myself shipping them a little bit. I was like, wait. Yes. No, I totally shipped them. <laughs> I 100% yeah. was like, Junpyo, she is everything you want in a wife, right? She's strong-willed, she's not gonna put up with your crap, but she grew up in your world and she'll be able to be the corporate wife. And, you know-, you know I love how they want. always have the characters that are meant for them, <laughs> like on the side. And then they put them with this way out of control character to be the end. And it's, it's always interesting to me. I mean, it's, it is interesting that they set her up that we can't hate her. Right. Yeah. Like, this is like, the first time. And, and even John D can't hate her. Yes. I mean, because she, she didn't know. I mean, well, she, I think she, she saved John D, you know, at the, that's yeah. how they first meet. And then she's like, let's be best friends. And then yeah. there's all those awkward scenes. But John D, tell the, you know, till the end, can't really hate her because she, I mean, she is so likable and she's yeah. so, uh, I mean, she, yeah, I mean, she's definitely, I mean, that's one good thing is that it's not, you know, a secondary female character that is evil that you, and manipulative in a horrible way that you, um, yeah, at all. You know, I mean, that's part of the pathos and you're just like, yes, they, they would be good together, you know, like, you know, that it's, it's an actual yeah. choice there. And so the, I, the irony ahead. for me was everybody kept saying that John D was like Junpyo's sister. And I was like, no, no, no. This woman is like your sister. hundred percent, hundred percent. And I love Junpyo's sister. Mm -hmm. oh, like, she was great too. And I completely agree with you on that. And another thing that really got to me about that whole plot was that Junpyo was gonna go through with the wedding. He was gonna go through with the wedding and it was the fiance who broke it off. And I was mad. I was, cause it was like, just from a writing point of view, the protagonist should be the one driving the main turning points of the story. And that was a major, and also in other versions of this, uh, he does break it off with her. Right. I mean, they have um, the scene the garden, night before. He's, he's like, where he's like, he says, I can't do this. I can't do right. this. And then all of a sudden, the next episode, he's walking up the aisle. You know, and you're yeah. like, what the hell? What yeah. the hell? 
<laughs> yeah, no, totally. And then, you know, and like I said, in the other versions of Hana Yoritango, he breaks it off. So why did they choose in the Korean version to have the fiance do it? Because Honestly, it makes him seem weak. A part of me thinks that Junpyo Loki was starting to like her anyway, so. Yes! <laughs> yes! In my head, I feel like he was starting to waver, but yeah. I completely agree with you. She was yeah. awesome. Why wouldn't he waver? Yeah, he, he was. He was a little bit. Little bit wavering. And, and I completely believe that if she hadn't chosen to broke it off, they would have got married. Oh, yes. He was not going to break that off. Yeah. He was not going to break it off. You know, nothing he does screams, I deserve to win the girl in this. His, he doesn't. <sighs> I mean, at least how you make me, you're just, here you, you hate on this drama, you hate watch it, and yet you have to watch two more versions of it. Oh, you did it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know, it is a, uh, it is a, I, it's truly a love hate truly a love hate for me it hits me and at the same time i'm just i'm I'm over it i I can't describe why when i watched the last episode this afternoon i was just like screaming i'm finished i'm finished like i mean you know we were joking about the music you know almost oh jesus and we're all like we never want to hear that again although i mean the tunes are like they're the earworms that they use throughout i mean because they they score it in different ways to be background music and so many instrumental background music and so many scenes and they are like these earworm worm hooks but it's like it's like enough already especially just watching it all at once over a week like, i like some of the songs in the movie though i actually like a few of the songs some of the songs are nice I, I, I do like an, them. It just yeah. is like it's this like almost overload. paradise was a bit annoying, but yeah. But I legitimately love because I'm stupid, and they have the two versions of it. I actually really love that. I so. love the fight the bad feeling, which um one of the F four F four boys actually was part of the band that it was <laughs> Wooten. It was yeah, Wooten. which is yeah. funny because he's exactly like his character. <laughs> He's like the rapper of the group. That's hysterical. That's funny. And he starts to song like, hey girl. <laughs> like, hey, now I like, have to oh, go looking for the video, Vicky. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a video, but it was like the audio. Oh, the song. Okay. You listen, just listen. It's like, why? You need to send this to us in our yes, group chat. We need it right it. now. It's on Spotify. And it literally the audio, like he's talking about like he, there's a part of his verse he actually like you know he's rapid and talking about it. it's really but yes i like that song though i like that song though, so i can't even hate i like it but you know um melanie going back to why and you know i've watched this damn thing so much you know i am kind of compelled by the the whole because like we've talked about this i grew up in a misogynistic culture straight up and um where male and female roles are really rigid and i broke out of it i mean i rebelled i literally moved across the country (laughs) to get away from it uh i married somebody outside of my culture because i didn't want to deal with that dynamic and yet though that dynamic calls to me um inevitably because the programming is in there regardless of how hard i fight it it's just it's embedded in me and so i consume fiction that has these elements in it and they speak to me. And it's an interesting thing because I think we all believe, and just for those of you who don't know, I, I mean, most of the listeners won't know this. I do, my my work involves working for progressive political causes and social justice causes. I've done work uh, involving feminist issues, anti-racism work, so forth. So like in my life, I, I work on this stuff. And yet when I consume fiction, I can consume the most regressive, awful stuff and have it give me a strong emotional reaction and I connect to it Um, because people are complicated. And that's why I don't like dragging people for the decisions they make about the fiction they consume, unless they're not critical about it. And then I get eye rolly. Like if you're like, this is the most amazing drama ever and Junpyo loved uh, John D and there was nothing problematic about their love, then yeah, we'll give you a side eye. but simply responding emotionally to these kinds of things, I think, I mean, we are part of a flawed society and a flawed culture and those messages are in there. 
Period. Right? End of story. Well, and as I said at the beginning, I think there's so many fairy tale um, archetypes of all different characters. I mean, you can you can view the um, Jihu's model girlfriend as like a fairy godmother. You know, she she gives the the dress to John D for that one party. Um, and does her makeup and and literally gives her shoes you know what I mean it's like such yeah. a Cinderella moment yeah. like here 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 are the shoes before I fly off to Paris you know you know I hope you have adventures in these shoes um you know just so many uh, or even um you know the uh, the grandmother character I love the actress so much we we all loved her from Coffee Prince as well but uh, you know there's just so many archetypes and so it just speaks to stories that we've grown up with you know right. the cinderella aspect of it um you know in a way you could view john d as like snow white with her dwarves you know like she becomes oh, you're right like, she she becomes like this mother figure for the all all of the f4 right you know i mean they all turn to her they all follow after her like little ducklings you know and so um there's just there's just so many archetypes of stories that we've grown up with that it just resonates with us like i said on like almost a molecular level where you, it just right. um you know you're like oh yeah, there's just this resonance this comfort and and maybe that's why this is a first drama because it has those archetype elements even if you don't know anything about korean culture um, you can watch this and feel like I know what's going on. That's the evil witch. I mean, literally, John Peel calls his mother the evil witch, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, like there, there's these elements that you're like, I know what's going on. I don't have to have it explained to me. Whereas something like My Mister, you know, that would be very difficult as an entry K drama. It's an excellent drama, but there's so many subtle things about Korean society and, um, the way people interact with each other in in office settings and and within their families and duties and whatever you can pick up some of it but i'm so glad i watched that after having seen so many other k dramas but maybe that's why this is an entry point for so many people because just the element raw elements of the story you get it you just get it on a basic level because of all the archetypes of the storytelling it's a cinderella story you know the poor girl the rich guy the prince literally the prince you know and i would say for me i mean you know i i might sound a little glib when i say i really hate this drama but on some level that means that drama is is hitting me emotionally it's not a drama that i watch and go okay this is boring i will never watch this again it's infuriating me it's there are moments that i think are really quite good there are some characters that i really like um so on some level, it really, it is connecting with me, even if my reaction is a negative one. Yeah. I mean, I think what, so one of my, you... fa yeah, my favorite oh, no. scenes is, yeah. is like the, is when uh, Jim Pyo is with her family and demands to sleep over and the joys of him making kimchi and going to the spa. And like all of those things are foreign to me, right? But just the emotions that he's having is... I wish I had a family, close family like this. That's universal. Like I can, anybody can recognize that. And I think if we, if we, you know, if we, we say that maybe Eamon Hall's acting wasn't, you know, great in this drama. I think those are the moments though, where he is quite good, where he has Jump Jumpyo looking baffled and excited at the same time to, to participate in those really, what we see as very simple family activities. Like when he eats the fish cakes, like, and yeah. he's like a little kid eating the fish cakes. I have to admit 20. that I was 20. That was actually 20 of really them. cute. Who, so who are the characters you like, Catherine? I'm just curious. I like Kirk, 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 Kirk. <laughs> Taking her a minute. <laughs> Catherine had to go, what? I like... If the answer is no, nobody, that's cool. No, too. I actually, I like Ha Jae Kyung, and I like his sister. And I think I like them because they have more agency. And I think that's what I connected to in the Japanese version. And that's what I connected to in the Taiwanese version is that, is that the Jundi character has more agency and, and more, I mean, in, in, in the manga, as well as those other two versions, 
the, the female lead makes the choice to go to that school because she understands that that will give her a better life. And, and the model international lawyer character is her role model and the reason why she is sacrificing so much to go to that school. So, so that's why for, for me, Jundi was never going to be a satisfying character simply because they took that away from her. Yeah. Yep. 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 I agree with that. I agree. I mean, the, the Korean version is my least favorite version by a lot, um, which is interesting, even though I loved Jihu so much and I do not love Hanasawa Hui or uh, Hua Sele. Uh, I actually don't love them. I mean, I don't hate them. Obviously, I like the characters, but like Jihu was the one I was like, <sighs> you know, totally, totally crushing on. Um, so the, I mean, this is a we've we've talked about how some older Korean dramas have more of a sexy vibe than current mm. drama, uh, uh, current dramas. However, it is kind of stunning to see, uh, uh, you know, some some of the the scenes um, have more of an element of sex in the other versions than the korean version and um you know they it's it's sort of a fade to black like af after he rescues her in the snow and takes off all his clothes to keep her warm <laughs> fade to black like did, it, did anything really happen that night <laughs> like, but the know. thing is like so in an in most cases i'd be like they totally did it and in this case i'm like they totally didn't do it they had there was no sex had that night and I find it fascinating that, in my view, the Koreans really desex the story because there's at least two situations where they could have had sex, and that's one of them. And the other one is the honeymoon yacht when uh, Jay Kyung gives them the yacht for the night, like, and they're looking at the stars. Uh, <laughs> there's the rose petals on the bed, and they're out there with the telescope. <laughs> He's having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> we had. <laughs> <laughs> he had to get the meteors back in because in the Japanese oh. version he does the puzzle with the with the meteors. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the Taiwanese is called Meteor Garden. So we we had to get the meteors. But back it didn't in have it. to be in that scene. <laughs> I said I know they did something. Nobody can convince me otherwise. That honeymoon scene, something had to happen because no, like no. <laughs> but in then my by head. the end, by the end, they're barely like you know, like kissing like brother yeah, and sister and or so something. Like, like what the it, hell? There was a lot of desexing, but it's not that we wanted it, but it's just like, it kind of did feel like they oh, I wanted it. more. Okay, well, <laughs> I mean, I did too, but <laughs> I was trying to be, you know, because I mean, it's a, it's meant for high school, you know, so I, I understand, but I feel like they tried too hard that it almost was like, you have a bunch of teenagers in this are you kidding me? It was just a bit unrealistic in but some me, cases. Okay, so let me tell you about the manga. There's a scene in the manga where she sneaks into the house and she goes to his room and they take their shirts off and they're rolling around on bed together. Yes. Shirtless. They still have their pants on, but they're yes. <laughs> and then she hits the point where she's like, okay, I feel uncomfortable. I don't want to keep going. And then Junpei's like, are you telling me to stop? I don't know what the word stop means. And then it's just a weird little freaky moment where you don't know if he's going to rape her. Yes, it's in the manga. <laughs> so when I tell you that the Korean version really desexed it, okay. and that, the manga yeah. was named a teenage girl. Okay, so, I, yeah. just, I just looked this up because I went, what network was this on? It was on KBS. Ah, so that means broadcast right yeah that's that's your first clue of um, course yeah i mean that's that's why when the whole thing with jisoo broke out my first reaction was oh he's, he's getting gone. dropped because kbs yeah. is not doing this yeah, i mean there's yeah. there's um um in the drama the the producers which is set in sort of a fictional kbs um cha Hyun plays a plays a producer yeah i've seen that show sure. and he ends up he, he's the he's the pd of two days for night uh, in the in the drama yeah um and he ends up constantly in front of the 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 board um that you know 
governs all of this stuff and and kbs is a public broadcaster so they yeah they have they don't um, they don't play they're yeah. so pg it's like almost scary it's like, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> but no but that because, makes <laughs> that makes sense then i get it However, yeah, that's right. i have to bring up this one we really weird scene in macau you know the one i'm bringing up oh yeah where uh, g <laughs> runs into an old friend of his who is a obviously gay and b obviously in love with Jihu, and then they talk about how they were really good friends back in the day, and then they have to go back to his house and spend the night. And the whole vibe of the scene is that they had a relationship, and that Jihu, like you know, had his little experimental period, and then decided he wasn't into it anymore. But they broke the other guy's heart, and the other guy is still into him. Yeah, and, and the other guy is looking at Jendi, and he's like, "This is what you're attracted yes! to." Yes, why? She's yes! kind of cute, I guess. <laughs> she goes. <laughs> She goes to drink out of the mug and he snatches it. Oh, from I her. love that scene so we much. See a picture of him with Jisoo on and it's like. Oh. Not Jisoo, Jihoo. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm, oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely not Jisoo. Definitely not Jisoo, Jihoo. Oh, um, I'm about three no, steps back. <laughs> that whole scene was so but, weird. And I'm like, why would you include that scene? Even if it's in the manga, and I don't know if it's in the manga or not, maybe it is. But like, why would you include that scene? The whole thing came across so weird. Like if they were trying to like, it almost came across, well, then again, maybe it was like sort of to disqualify Jihu from really being the person for Jandi in some way. Like he was too much of a freak. Vicky is losing it over that one. <laughs> <laughs> like I couldn't. I, I, the whole thing made no sense and it was just plopped into the narrative in the middle of well middle I mean it, it could be like continue uh, I was just say is it like Vincenzo where everybody has a thing for Jihu he's so beautiful and so handsome I mean I I don't know but it, it is like a really not not that I have anything against if Jihu had a relationship with someone in school but I'm just saying it, it is an odd vibe of a scene and not only that, Jihu walks in on Jandi when she's on the toilet. Like right? that's another just like really everything was weird. Just so weird. Everything was weird about that weird. episode. That was very strange. That was very though. Though that's in the that's kind of that's in the manga. So I don't know what that's about. It's I mean, and then Japanese she won't come. She won't come out for a whole day. Like I can I can relate. Like he just kind of stands there. Like oh well, the, like, <laughs> like, just shut the door. Don't just sing her a whole song and dance about how the door wasn't unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no I really do wonder though in the narrative if it's just like because he's not someone who's pure enough for her or whatever because he's had two relationships before her if you're gonna I think, really think that way like it's with what Melanie said that everybody wants him type of thing like it was making him appeal it it was like one of those things where it was just kind of highlighting Jihu, like this amazing guy that even guys want <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> like, that's honestly I think I think that's what they were going for. That's cause... probably right. But it's for being like, you know, the family drama that was all cleaned up, man, that whole right? scene. It so, felt so weird. off, like yeah. compared to like all everything. Not but... that I wasn't entertained because I was. I laughed really hard through that whole thing. But um, yeah, that was, that was strange. Um, I think we might be getting to the end of our episode. Did I did we miss anything that we were planning? And boy, this was a lot. Is there anything you want to, so the, what I always close these episodes with is, would you recommend this classic? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Catherine is practically chewing her hands off. I wish you guys could see it. I, 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 I probably wouldn't. Um, and not just because I don't like it, but I also recognize I don't understand it in a lot of ways and I don't connect with it. Um, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I've said before, I'm the crazy person who will watch all sorts of weird stuff for, for a house fave. So, you know, if you've, if you've discovered Yi Min Ho somewhere else and, you know, you will go back and you'll, I think people will find this anyway. I, <laughs> yes. I, I do, I do hope that like a discussion like this at least opens up to someone who may have had it recommended to them and hasn't started yet and they might at least know what they're getting into. Yeah. I, yeah, I would oh. say it's, it's, it depends. It, I, I would have to know my audience and, and know, is this someone that 
is very new to K-dramas, then maybe it's, this isn't the first one that I would recommend to them. If this is someone who's like, I'm really into K-dramas, I want to watch everything, then I'd be like, okay, maybe you need to see this just to know what everyone else is referring to. Uh, again, it's the DDLJ kind of thing. Like you have to know what everyone else is reacting or imitating and but uh like for instance there was a tweet that just came across today someone said i'm looking for uh i have a tween who wants to watch something else like true beauty you know she wants younger opas like a tween no i am not recommending boys over flowers to a young girl right like mm -hmm. there's just too much problem it is a problematic classic it is not something that I would recommend for a young girl right now. And I think, you know, we, we, we started the discussion with this, um, you know, something that has been that recommended, that watched for over 30 years, you can't ignore it. You, you, you just can't put it on a shelf and say, no, you, you really do have to have to face it and deal with it. Yeah, um, what you guys said, I, I think I'm at that point where I'd rather the people I know discover it for themselves and then come like, hey, have you seen Boys of Love? Oh yeah, let's discuss. Because I made a mistake of recommending it to like two people and they all came back and reported to me like, what is with this hair? What are they doing? What is going on? And I was just like, you know what? <laughs> just drop it. It's not the drama for you if you can't handle that. But ironically, it's funny because Boys of Flowers was supposed to get off Netflix last year, May. But I don't know. I think it just got popular that people, they bought it back. Netflix bought the rights um, to keep airing it so like you said they will find it eventually they will find it themselves they will watch it themselves and then whatever they feel they feel but i per se i'm not gonna be the one telling them to watch it i just don't want any well and i saw something the other day um that was that suggested that um ku, 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 sorry i'm tired yes yeah, she's still getting money ku is still yeah. getting residuals from yeah. that show oh, and yeah. that's, I mean, that's what she lives on which i assume is, yeah. is the case for much of the cast or the yeah. main cast so you know that that tells you that people it's are a very it. popular show especially isn't the korean there, one isn't there a bts video that's an homage yes to yes there yeah. is <laughs> yeah. They did it almost <laughs> yeah i gotta go and watch that i know i have seen yeah. it but I'll, but you know like the, the irony is that i would not recommend this to anybody yeah me unless too. i had a severe content warning i'm actually shocked that so many people recommended it to me and did not yeah. give me a heads up me about too, what i was in for. um i was getting it recommended constantly and initially when i heard the description i'm not into teen stuff very much so i was like not really yeah. excited to see it but i got recommended so often that i finally went okay i'm gonna watch it but then, like I said, nobody said, hey, by the way, <laughs> there's a near rape in the first episode and there's this and violence yeah. and that. Nobody ever gave me a clue. I went in totally unspoiled. I didn't know anything about it going in. And I was honestly taken aback that. So I don't, I personally would never, unless I had a real, like to say, listen, it's got X, Y, and Z. You need yeah. to know going in. Exactly. You may still like it. I like it, but it's got exactly. huge problems. Yeah, and I, I do want to say for the nayers, if you only hate it because of the hairstyle and the fashion, then yeah. okay, okay. Because there's so much more to, if that's the case, then you have that problem with a lot of dramas, especially the classic ones, you know? So I really, I don't, I when they say, oh my gosh, like I just don't like their hair yet, I'm like, stop. Just watch it for yourself beyond that and see, you know what I mean? Because I feel like you may, you know be the minority or the majority that ends up having a love and hate relationship with it where you kind of like it but you don't and yeah so yep. i think that's wow. for today's I, discussion this was a lot guys you guys are yeah. awesome i love talking to you i all. love this this is Hard lovely i mean I, I just knew we had to talk about this one. Oh yeah that's the thing <laughs> there's so much to talk about yeah um there's so much i mean it is a long drama but there's just uh, there's so many issues with this and 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 because it is a problematic classic I mean I'm glad that we're we're just not having you know yes we can say even Ho is as handsome and you know yeah but we're not like blind to the fact that the show is 
Right. But we're delving, we're delving into the issues that, that make you wince a little bit when you, when you, when you watch it, uh, Mm -hmm. even though it is absolutely cracktastic and you can't stop watching it. And once again, you know, it's another drama in, in the series we've been looking at that's making me look at, as, as a long-term drama watcher, that's making me look at, at situations, dramas, and the stuff they, they dig out much differently. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you to the listeners. We love you. And uh, we will be back soon with another episode. Take care, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.